One of those dear friends and essential relationships was the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese, the Right Reverend Doug Thurner. Thank you, Julie. I'm going to say something that's not on the script. What a wonderful, I of course always do, what a wonderful thing it is at this particular time in our nation's history to celebrate an organization that knows how to handle housing, credit, and financing. Yes! Whoa! In 1986, I became the Episcopal Bishop of New Hampshire. And shortly thereafter, Julie Eads called me up on the phone and invited me to go with her to the Diocese of Western Massachusetts to meet with some people who had established a fledgling community loan fund in that diocese. Now, I didn't know Julie, and Julie didn't know me, and I'm not quite sure why she was calling me. She'd heard that I had been very much involved in affordable housing in my previous parish in Connecticut, and I think she wanted to check me out and see if I was, would live up to my publicity, and she also wanted a little ecclesiastical arm candy to take with her to <laughs> yesterday. But in any event, in any event, I became, hey, hey, Reverend. she converted me. We had a car trip down and back, and, and I was absolutely filled with Julie's ideas and Julie's vision and Julie's hope, and committed to do whatever I could to help her and the Community Loan Fund uh, realize those dreams and visions which she had. In 1988, the uh, National Episcopal Church held its 69th General Convention in Detroit, and acting out of that kind of guilt that occasionally, occasionally rises up and overwhelms Episcopalians, <clears throat> they unanimously passed something called the Michigan Plan for Economic Justice. And the Michigan Plan for Economic Justice called on every diocese in the Episcopal Church in the next three years to establish some focus of uh, economic justice, community justice in their lives. And we came back from Detroit to New Hampshire, and the Diocese of New Hampshire decided that permanent affordable housing would be the area of focus for us in, in conjunction with the Michigan Resolution. I'm not going to tell you how many dioceses followed through on that, but the Diocese of New Hampshire did. Right. Uh, and, and so at that convention, at the Diocesan Convention that fall, we had invited Chuck Mathai, whom I'd met through Julie, to come and be our guest speaker and to tell the diocese about, uh, about affordable housing and about uh, uh, microcredit, about community loaning and so on and so forth. And, and so Chuck was all set to come in the fall of 89, I guess it was, or, or 90. And I called him up to make sure he was coming and to tell him, to warn him about the fact that the banking industry in New Hampshire at that time was in very rough shape. Come to find out, he thought I was calling him to ask him to please not come and speak at our convention because the banking industry was in such rough shape. <clears throat> On the contrary, I had something to present that was in good shape to the diocese, and that was the New Hampshire Community Loan Fund. And Chuck came. We became fast friends, and through his influence, I was on the circuit for a long time in New, in New England as a supporter of community loan funds. I don't want, I can't add much to what Michael Swack already said, but. It is my personal and professional opinion that Chuck Mathai is as close to a living saint as any human being I have ever met, and I, I mean that seriously. <clears throat> we are honored to be gathered here kind of in his name, as we're honored to be gathered in Julie's name. Uh, Chuck spoke at the convention. The convention passed a resolution calling on vestries, bishops, committees, and school trustees to explore the possibility of designating a portion of their investment capital using 5 to 10 percent as a guideline to be lent to groups such as the New Hampshire Community Loan Fund, local land trusts, or similar alternative investments. <clears throat> that was done and followed through with. The response during this time of economic downturn and failing local banks was very positive. Realizing that members of the diocese had the will to support affordable housing, but they did not have the infrastructure to put it into effect, in 1991, the Diocesan Task Force on Economic Development created a partner relationship with the Community Loan Fund. In the ensuing years, over half the congregations of the diocese, as well as numerous individuals and church agencies such as the National Episcopal Church's Economic Justice Loan Fund, of which I was a member, made loans or donations to the Community Loan Fund, New Hampshire Community Loan Fund, totaling over $1,300,000. 
And this relationship has persisted to this day. It just happened, and this will tell you, this will warn you about ever confessing good things. You say that you confess bad things, you confess good things, you're in trouble. Uh, just at the reception prior to this event in here, I ran into the rector of St. George's Church in Durham who told me that that congregation still has as a part of its annual budget a contribution to the New Hampshire Community Loan Fund. He happened to have with him a parishioner whom I know from various things in the diocese who he told me one year when the, when the parish had no money at all and was really scraping the bottom of the barrel, this parishioner and his wife wrote a check to cover the amount of contribution to the loan fund. The partnership between, my wife has always said to me, you're a great preacher, you're good at getting people fired up, but you're not very good at telling them how to do anything with the enthusiasm you've created. That's, that's the story of my life. So uh, I get people all fired up, and then what do they do? I found the New Hampshire Community Loan Fund. The partnership between a group of people who had the will to do something good, but not the infrastructure or the knowledge or the expertise to do it, and the Community Loan Fund together has been a wonderful thing for the diocese and other places in the church, uh, not just the Episcopal Church, uh, other churches also, and, and I'm eternally grateful for that and grateful to you, Julie. Thank you.